on. Okay, today's going to be a fun one. Uh, this brother is an extremely talented and funny brother. I love having, I love having these conversations with comedians. Um, and I don't want to just classify him as a comedian because he's a writer, he's an actor. He's also an incredible stand-up comedian. Uh, please give it up because this is just going to be fun today. Give it up to my man, Doug Williams. Doug, welcome, brother. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me, man. Uh, I have to admit, this was a uh, pleasant surprise, man. Uh, when my wife uh, told me, you know, you and I connected through my wife and my brother-in-law. So, you know, I was out on the road traveling. So when they told me that uh, you wanted to do this interview, man, uh, I got really excited about it. So, you know, because uh, you family. So this is going to be fun, like you said. Nah, it's going to be fun, man. And I definitely wanted to sit down with you. And I'm going to tell you, I, I, I literally had a, 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 a conversation with Alex Thomas not too long ago, who obviously you're familiar with. Of being course, out on of the course. Coast. And that was one of the most fun conversations that I have had since I started doing this. And, you know, I'm, I'm just looking for that same energy because it's something about being around people who are just naturally freaking funny. Like, just funny. Like, I, I almost can't even imagine what it's like in your household with your wife and in your family, have you believe it or not, been a funny dude? No, man, believe it or not, comedians are normally the opposite at home and around me. We, we're some of the most depressed, uh, <laughs> angry, uh, upset people you ever want to meet in the confines of our own home and around our own people. You know, it's almost like, you know, we perform so much and we're on all the time that we need pl a, a, a place to just unwind, to just let everything go, to let everything out. So, uh, you know, at home and around uh, my family, they, they would give you a different version of me. You know, he's mean, he's, uh, he's, he's cranky, he's upset. So it, 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 people don't realize how different we are off stage as opposed to when we're on stage. And I, I equate on stage with being on these interviews, performing, and just being in, in front of the public. Yo. You just blew my mind with that. You're telling me if I'm a fly on the wall in your crib, you ain't cracking jokes, you ain't got a thousand punchlines, you don't have your family rolling 24 nah, hours a day? It's the opposite, man. I, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know if this, uh, if, if you can use profanity on here, but I'm- Absolutely, I'm, feel free. I'm, I'm telling you, look, motherfucker, Go over here. I'm trying. Uh, hey, my, you know, I was just into it with my son last night, man, trying to get him to do homework. And and the crazy thing about it is, is that my kids don't take me serious. They think everything I do is funny. So even when I'm being serious and I'm trying to get on to them, they're laughing and joking and 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 you know I have to uh, uh, reel them in, man. Like, look, motherfucker, I'm I'm, I'm not playing, man. I'm serious, man. <laughs> do your homework get off the phone do this do that you know and, so, and you know my father used to always say when you're dealing with someone you have to speak the language that they understand and all my kids really understand they don't listen until i start saying motherfucker and cursing that's the language that they understand you know so you know that's 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 their language and, I, and unfortunately i have to speak it to them a lot oh man you, you know something how, how how did you even get into comedy? Is this something that you've always wanted to do with your life? You know, I always wanted to be uh, an entertainer. Just from going, I grew up in Montgomery, Alabama in the South and watching, uh, going to the uh, Baptist church. And you know, Baptist preachers and preachers in the South, they're entertainers, man. They come and they, you know, they get to, and you know, it's funny because, uh, you know, we study now a lot with the Jehovah's Witness. That's a whole nother story in itself. Uh, but but I come from the Baptist church. So we took my my kids for the first time. I mean, they, they went back to Montgomery, Alabama with me when they were young. But now they're older, they're teenagers. And we took them to the original church uh, that I grew up in. And they, you know, and when you go to, you know, the Kingdom Hall for people who are Jehovah's Witnesses out there, it's very serene. They don't do anything that draws attention away from what they're trying to say. But in the process, you know, you have to be alert or you can be, you know, fall off, doze off, become bored, you know. 
but it's not like that in the Baptist church. So anyway, we took them there and we had some older brothers in there going, well, say it again. They started looking around and they heard the talking and they, and they couldn't believe it, man. And so they were just blown away by the interaction between the preacher and the congregation. You know, when he says something, you know, people catching the Holy Ghost and moving and they had never seen anything like that, man. And they were just blown away by it. So it was just, it was a different experience for them to go to the Baptist church and people out there in the South and the church people, they know what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? Somebody started doing this, you know, and then there's always an older woman that'll come in for sisters and grab their glasses. So they destroy their glasses, you know, they take their glasses off, they start taking stuff off of them. So, you know, it won't fall and break. Yeah, but I'm gonna tell you something. It ain't nothing like the black church. I don't care what religion you are. I don't care what you practice. If you want to experience something, something different and something new. go to a black church go 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 to a, a baptist church go to a pentecostal church go to a church where they uh feel that spirit for real like and that's there's always gonna be something and see when i came out here to uh la and you know i came from the baptist church and you know in the south preachers put a lot into their sermons they think about it they write it but now everything is like microwave so I remember coming out here, I'd be sitting out in the thing and you hear something, you know, they're not original. So they would come up, you know, today's sermon is y'all going to make me lose my mind. And you'd be like, wait a minute, I know I didn't heard this somewhere before. This is not his shit. And now it's to the point where when I go, I kept my phone and I, I, shaz I start shazamming motherfuckers. say, wait a minute. I shaz hey, man, that's not your shit. And who, who is that out there? It's me, the brother in the third row. Do your original shit. You can't be doing other people's shit. So, you know, I just started, you know, it's a lack of creativity out there now. So. Oh, man. Oh, man. Okay. Yo, you you know, I did not know it. And this is crazy because before we got on the call, I was just, um, or before we got in, in, into this interview, I was just doing some research on you. I didn't know you was a Q. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's why I, I wear purple. I wear so much cute stuff that, you know, my wife is like, look, every interview you go on, everything you got. So now I'm doing, I'm just representing Alabama State University, HBCU. I graduated from Alabama State University, but I still got on the purple and stuff, you know? So, you know, my wife is trying to say, hey, you every you can't represent every time you do something, especially Why not? You know, when you're going to be cursing and stuff like that or whatever. So now I just kind of, you know, I kind of scale back. You know, I, I, I sat down with brother Roland Martin and uh, first and foremost, what year did you pledge? Uh, you know, it's interesting. I actually, uh, I should have crossed in like 92, 93 at Alabama State University, but the queues were suspended on the, on the yard. So I didn't get a chance to cross. So I went back to school and, uh, and got my degree while I was here in, mm. uh, in 2014. And once I got my degree from Alabama State University, and that's a always... I use that to say it's never too late in life, man. The two things that I always wanted in life, I always wanted a degree and I always wanted to be a part of Omega Sci-Fi Fraternity Incorporated. So I went back to school, got my degree, and then I crossed in uh, 2015. Got you. Okay, so I sat with Roland. And and as you know, he is a, a member oh. of AFIA. Um, and, and what I'll give him credit is he always supports and bigs up the Divine Nine. Absolutely. Um, very Absolutely. much so. But he had a very interesting take. I think he told me he went over in spring 89. And in spring 89, it, the, the pledge process was so different than it is today. And he was like, you know what? I never got touched. I never got hazed. And I'm proud of it. There, there was never one day that, matter of fact, I'm going to go so far as to say he said, when, when one of his big brothers tried to haze him, he was about to break line, whip his big brothers behind, and then get back on line. And I'm like, what? And he was adamant. We pledged the right way. W what is your thought on the pledge process just overall? Uh, you know, man, I, I, I had an interesting come I'm trying to shut all this stuff now, man, because you're going to hear chimes and chirps and stuff like that, so many phones and stuff around Take here. your time. Yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, I look at things like this, man, and a lot of people don't look at things like this. You know, everything evolves. 
And so, you know, within the, the Greek community, the divine nine community, you have this uh, pecking order, you know, of people that, that crossed in the eighties, people that crossed in the seventies, people that crossed in the nineties. And, you know, in every fraternity and sorority, a lot of times they try to compare what the brothers went through in the eighties with what the brothers went through in the nineties. And you can't compare that because just like the NBA, and this is a, a, a great example, you can't judge the NBA players today by what they did in the NBA in the 90s. You know, when Michael Jordan was coming, when it was clothesline and they were doing all those things because things are evolved. But that doesn't make the players any less talented, mm. you know, because you play from the field that's in front of you. You know, I can't play, if I was in the NBA, I can't worry about what happened in the, in the 80s. I have to play with what's in front of me today. So I say the same thing about uh, Greek fraternities, you know, when you your time that you cross is your time that you cross and, and, and you deal with that era and, and the challenges that come with that. And they might not be as severe or as great as what happened in the 90s, but that still shouldn't make you any less uh, of, a, a, of a person or a pledgy or, or, or alpha or Q or uh, uh, Sigma or whatever fraternity you pledge, Kappa. I don't want to leave anybody out. Nah, you know, you know, that is actually a very great answer and, and, and it's great perspective. It really, really is. Um, I think so often the, the OGs, no matter what it is, um, you know, I come from the music industry and you can talk and, and th th this right now is the 50th year in hip hop. And you have a lot of the people who paved the way for so many artists who are making big money today. And they don't give these artists the same credit. They, you know, actually look down on a lot of the artists because what they had to go through to just pave the way so that these artists could cash a big check. So it's very hard. I mean, it's a great perspective you just shared because it's very hard to compare generations. It's very hard to compare different paths because the playing field is, is just not set up the same. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, can you imagine you know, if we use that 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 uh, measuring stick or that barometer in in every case, you know, imagine what the slaves would say about these NBA players who can't play because their knee hurt. Like, man, you can't play basketball because your knee hurt. I can't. They cut my foot off, and I still tried to run and escape. You understand what I'm saying? I went out and picked cotton with two fingers, and you you hollering because your knee is sprained. You can't play basketball. So you know, I mean, we can you can use that comparison. It's never ending that comparison. Nah, that's so real. That's so real. Okay, um, it's a whole lot going on in the world today. Uh, it, it, you know, some of this stuff is just simply staggering and mind blowing and and, and shocking to say the least. Um, you, you know, your your fellow your fellow comedian Luel. Oh, uh, not sure if you've seen. And, and first and foremost, shout to to no, I call them Luel. Lunel. 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 Lunel, my apologies. First of all, shout to her, right? She has a brand ambassador deal with Fenty, Rihanna's company. She, she's out there modeling lingerie, 63 years old. But more shocking, she now has a, a OnlyFans account. And you know, literally- can you, can you clarify, you know, because here's the, here's the, the separation and the the, I don't want, uh, for lack of a better term, the gap between married men, single men, and the young generation. You know, this uh, members only or fan, what, what, what did you call only it? Only fans. Only yeah, fans. What, what is that? Because I keep hearing that, you know, is that a, something that you set up where you, where you, 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 and I'm trying to, you know, get my mind wrapped around it because I've heard it. Uh, Cause I recently just, you know, I retired from porn, everything, man. I just had to, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm completely out the game. I hung up my porn Jersey, all of my stuff, you know, I've been married for, we just celebrated 20 years. So I'm completely out of the game. Is that where you get on and you sell pictures of yourself naked and you show different things and you try to get like a following? It's almost like a, 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 a Instagram for, for, uh, for lack of a better term, pornography or nudity. Is that what that is? I just want to make sure I fully understand. Okay. What, 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 what it is, is you got the right idea. But suppose it was, it was created as 
a, a platform where anybody, I don't care if you are a recording artist, if you are a traditional artist where you draw, okay. if you are somebody with talent, you can uh, go out there, do what you do, and you can have fans come and subscribe to your channel. And okay. you give them material that, you know, is exclusive to them because they are subscribing to you on a monthly basis. Now, what it has evolved into or what it's most known for is average Joe, mom, dad, people getting on there and selling very, very racy, uh, uh, explicit photos and, and video content of themselves. And that's you know, what I've, that's what has become it. known to me. That's what's getting back to me. I don't, I, all that other stuff I haven't heard about, you know, trying to get backstage or back, you know, behind the scenes footage. I didn't hear that. I've just heard, you know, the stuff that you just said, you know, the naked and, you know, everybody, you know, almost like an adult uh, sex tape site, you know, in, in that, in that vein. That, that's kind of what it's become. Now, right. the, the, what, what is your thoughts? Like, is, is it because Lunell is 63 years old. This, this is, this is, this is a, a grown woman. And, mm -hmm. you know, she, she's on there and she's rocking her, her lingerie. She's up there with video of her in, 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 in a bath. And, and she's showing, <laughs> she ain't showing the whole thing, but, but she's showing, you know, she got some tig old bitties. She hey, that's hilarious. I love, that. All I love that phrase, Tigo Bitty. Listen, let me tell you something about New Lair, man. I've been in this game for a long time, and there, you know, very few comedians uh, that have been in this game that you can name that I don't know and that I uh, haven't had some type of personal experience with. And uh, I told this story to Lunel. I, I, I saw it at the Laugh Factory. Uh, this was a while ago at Paul Mooney. They did a uh, memorial for Paul Mooney. But Lunel and I, it was it, three people. We went in a... Uh, and I hope she doesn't get mad if she sees this or whatever. And I tell the story. I don't. I, 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 if she got a fans only page, I can't imagine her getting mad at this. I don't know if I said that right. But we were in a limousine and we had just taped Comic View, and we were on our way back to the hotel. It was Lunell, uh, 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 God rest his soul. Uh, what's the red comedian? He was red. Uh, uh, oh, comedy. I forget his name. I know uh, exactly. Uh, what you told uh, light skin brother. Ronaldo, Ronaldo Ray. Ronaldo Ray. There you go. There you go. It was, it was Lunel. Lunel, Ronaldo Ray, and me. We were in a limo, and it was pouring down, raining, and we were on our way back to the hotel. And we were in a traffic jam. I never will forget this, and le neither will Lunel. And she said, "I gotta pee. I gotta pee." And so uh, Ronaldo said, "Well, yeah, you better piss in your pocket. I mean, pee in your pants, because we ain't getting back to the hotel in a while." And we were like in bumper to bumper traffic. I'm not making this up. It was pouring down raining, not light raining, pouring down. Lunell pulled her pants down, stuck her ass out the door, opened the door, stuck her ass out the door and pissed. And Ronaldo looked at me and said, you see this bitch? She is actually pissing out the door. She pissed, pulled her pants up a closer. And Ronaldo was like, well, you're not going to wipe. You're not going to do shit. You're just going to piss and then close the door. She said, you motherfucking right. So I said all that to say this. If she can do that, in public, people watching it, then this fans only or whatever thing you talking about, that's nothing for Lunel. If you can piss in public <laughs> in, while it's raining <laughs> in a car with two guys, oh, this is a piece of cake right here, man. In fact, uh, I wish she had somebody had recorded that. that that's what people would have paid to see on fans. She'd have got so many subscribers from just showing that footage in itself. Yo, so hold on. <laughs> because even me hearing this story, I want to know, did she wipe herself? No, nah, she didn't have anything to wipe herself. She pissed and and pulled her clothes back up and set. And, and, and the crazy thing about it was, after Ronaldo said that, when we started back, we just had like nothing that happened. We were talking about the show. We were the, it, it wasn't a big deal. So Lunell has always been a free spirit, man. I, I, and I've known Lunell 20 years, man. She's always been a free spirit person and uh, just and a nice person, too. You know, mm. so uh, that's Lunell. Shout to Lunell. Shout to Lunell. <laughs> and that's oh, a true story. That is a true, I remember it like it was yesterday. Okay, I got to ask you. Please, to, okay, you, you from the South, you from Alabama? Montgomery, Alabama, the cradle of the civil rights movement, the Mecca. 
where it all started uh, in Montgomery, there you Alabama. Go. Montgomery, Alabama. So y'all, y'all down the street from Atlanta, not too far away. You, you got to remember Freaknik. Oh yeah, yeah. Did you did you used to go to Freaknik? I went a couple of times. Believe it or not, man, I've never. I'm, I've I've always been an introvert. You know, I've never been a, a person. That's why my wife, uh, my wife just snatched me up when I got out here. Man, I came out here to uh, L.A. I had just. Uh, you know, finished college, or at least I thought. And then I uh, I moved out here. So I went from my mom's house to living out here. And I was like a country bumpkin, man. I used to wear the shirts with the the, the, the checkerboard pockets on it and everything. And, you know, we were working on The Nutty Professor. Uh, I introduced Dave Chappelle. And uh, I was in that scene. If you go back and look at it now, you'll see me introduce Dave Chappelle, Reggie Warrington. Give it up for Reggie Warrington. And he comes out and he does a little thing. And my wife saw me from the corner of the room and she came up and she claimed she thought I was somebody else and made conversation. Uh, so yeah, I, you know, I, I just got off the truck, man. So uh, when it came, when, you know, things like Freaknik and stuff like that, I was familiar. I went a couple of times with, with friends or whatever, but it was just too buck wild for me to, you know, boom, 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 boom. So I know what it is. I went a couple of times, but nah, man, I, I, I wasn't, you know, and, and I, I've just never been a party, party person, you know, never have. And uh, even to this day. Okay. Um, but you're aware of it and, and and you use the word to describe it. It was buck wild, which it was long, long before there was social media, you know, dudes used to run around with camcorders back in the days. And a lot of the women, <laughs> they was out there getting buck wild. And a lot of dudes had their camcorders and kept that footage. Now, fast forward 25 years later, those same women who were in college, who went out there, got buck wild for the weekend, videotaped, those tapes sat dormant for years and years and years. Now they're being put together and being put out in a documentary about the 1996 Freaknik. And so many women are scared to death. You got five prominent women, doctors, lawyers, women who are now not just mothers, but their grandparents. They are literally suing so that this documentary never sees the light of day. Wow. I mean, is I, that I, not I, some crazy crap? You know what the crazy, the, the funny thing about that is, is that most of them are probably not suing because you know, they're in, because of the actual content. Most of them are probably suing because of what they used to look like and what they look like now. You understand? So, you know, you slim, petite, fine. You know, people are like, you used to look like that. That's you? That's what they don't want to get out. You know what I'm saying? You were skinny at one point? When was this? So, you know, <laughs> I think that's the more, more embarrassing thing because they were aware that those cameras were rolling. They knew Oh, they was 100% aware. aware. It, huh? They was a hundred percent away. Yeah, you know, because I, I went to those. It wasn't like you know people were secretly recording there. No, they stood in front of the camera dancing. Ah, 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 ah. But now, you know, a hundred and sixty pounds later, it's like, nah, you can't show that. So that's that's what that is. Trust me. Oh, oh, yo, you got me dying over here. I'm telling you, you know what's the crazy thing? Because some of these women got daughters themselves and they've been on them since birth. Don't put this stuff up on social media. They screaming at their daughters and now their daughters got to look and be like, really? Yeah, exactly. That exactly. was you? Ex that might, back to that. That was you? Exactly. Exactly. Skeletons in the closet. But you know, um, you know, but I agree with the women, uh, um, you know, on that point, because if somebody's going to release something like that, they should be compensated. You know, you, you, you're in the music industry. I'm in it. You know, it's all connected. But release forms have to be signed unless I think what breaks that, because my, my major was in print journalism. If something is being done under the auspices of news or like documentary footage, I don't think you, I think they have a right that they, they, can, they can air that. So there's a way you can finagle it to where you can, uh, to where it can be put out without their uh, consent. Yeah, I, I, I can't wait to see how this one is going to fall. But, you know, th there are a lot of people who went on to do 
amazing things in their life. And that was just a, a, a wow moment that they had. And now, it you know, they, they going to walk into the office, you know, they doctor such and such, or they are, you know, have an Esquire behind their name. They're lawyers now, they're accountants and CPAs. And people are going to be like, yo, are you like, are you serious? I think that's I, I, great. I think that's wonderful. We need more of that. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you like to know what your doctor used to do or that they were, they're normal people? You understand what I'm saying? When you go there and you say, hey, I saw your video. That was awesome. When you did that, when you pulled it down all the way on the thing like that, because I was beginning to think that you were just this normal person. But now this, this cosign that you are a regular person just like me. What you doing after this? You want to go out and get a drink or something? I think that's great. So hold on. You think it's going to work in their favor? No, I don't know if it's going to work in their favor because of the way society is, but it should work in their favor. It should work in their favor because, you know, we all are human. We all were young at some point in time. We all have uh, 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 things that we've done in life that we're not necessarily proud of, but that show that we we come from humble beginnings and that we were human at one point in time. And I think that's the problem with society is that we're building people up and and. and, and and we're starting to follow people and give them too much credit for being, you know, perfect or upright or, 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 or in this light. And, and, and that's not the case. And that's one of the beautiful things about stand-up comedy. That's why we love comedians, because we expose their side. When Bernie Mac came out and he talked about, you know, his, his sister on drugs and having to raise those kids, you know, when you hear these stories, Richard Pryor talking about how he used to use drugs. We expose ourselves, but everybody else is trying to stay in a closet. And that's not how life is. So, you know, I don't know if it'll backfire on them, but I, I just think it's great. I know, you know, it, I would find some solace if I had a doctor or a lawyer or one of these people that uh, these in, in this professional light, and I found that out about them. I don't think it would, you know, taint my, my vision of them, unless it was something, you know, they did that was perverted or something, you know, that 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 crossed over the, the the lines of being legal or something like that, but just partying out having fun. Come on, man, we've all done that, you know. I I think that's great. Now I think that's a I think that's a dope perspective that you just bring up. I I, I definitely do. Um, you you mentioned something I want to touch on. This society we live in, it is. It is so politically correct. Everybody's, I mean, it, it started off, be, being woke started off as a good thing. But where it has morphed into, you damn near can't do anything. You can't say anything. You can't have opposing views about anything. How, how you're a comedian. You, you guys, y'all go against the grain. You talk about things that are taboo and y'all are not afraid to touch on things that people only think but would never say. How, how has this society even impacted you being a comedian? Well, you know, I, I, I do, I am very conscious now to give a disclaimer before I start my comedy. You know, uh, uh, a lot of my comedy I do uh, at a corporate level. I work for Carnival, Cruise Lines. I do a lot of corporate gigs. And in the nightclubs, you're, you're pretty much safe. You can just, you know, pin back because people know they're coming to a rated R. But when you're doing it uh, in a place of business where people aren't necessarily invited, they're there and they decide to go as a part of this function, you know, it is incumbent. I feel, I always let people know now, hey, if you're easily offended, if you don't realize that this is comedy, if you take things literal, this is not the show for you. So it's sad that we've come to that point where you have to give that disclaimer, but we have come to that point. And I always say, when you silence comedians, when comedians aren't able to talk about what they want to talk about, then we've truly lost freedom of speech because you're right, everybody else is, has become censored. And that goes back to my point. You hit it the nail on the head with being politically correct. We are so politically correct that whenever we find out somebody used to be human, we're disappointed. We don't want to support that person anymore. And I, I, I think we, we've got to move away from that. We've got to allow people to be themselves. And so 
you know, that's why I am with my stand-up comedy. I let people know, hey, I'm finna talk about fat women. I'm gonna talk about, you know, black people. I'm gonna talk about white people. I'm gonna talk about this. And if you if you easily offended, don't don't watch my set. I, I mean, that that's where I am. Is, is, is there anything that you personally have excluded from your set? No, or you know, oh, topics the only, you don't touch? The, yeah, you know, the only time I'm censored, man, is my wife censors me. Like, if I go too far in our relationship, if I start talking about too much of our personal business, which, by the way, I love talking about. You know, that, <laughs> that's that's the person, hey, hey, you going too far. I don't want people to know this, because a lot of my comedy is about my marriage and about being married and stuff like that. And uh, so it's all good. And, you know, in fact, I, I sometimes use that to to persuade my wife. Hey, look, if we don't do this, I'm gonna talk about it on stage now. I mean, because this, this, you know, you know, if you, you said that you you can only have sex, you know, once every two weeks. I gotta tell the people about that. You go, you know. So that's the only person that really senses me is my wife. You know, I I give a lot of credit. You mentioned this man earlier, uh, Dave Chappelle. You work with him. You knew him when he was very young. Uh, him being on a nutty professor, he was he was still skinny. Little Dave Chappelle hadn't blown up yet. I I and I'm a fan. I'm not a comedian. I, I'm I'm just a person who is a fan of comics, and I like to get your thoughts because to me, Dave has stepped from being a funny comedian to to. He's he's goat level, but he's goat level because he is unwilling to be censored, unwilling to accept the status quo or accept that this can potentially ruin my career. And when people are willing to push the boundaries, knowing the repercussions that could come to them, they go to a different level altogether. And that's why I love this man so much. From a comedian standpoint, do you guys look at a, 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 a Dave Chappelle in a way like, you know, th th this guy's almost a revolutionary in, in some regards. He is somebody who is so fearless, even at the, at, at the extent that it, it might cost him his career. Well, we, 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 we in the comedy community, because there have been a lot of discussions around that, we compartmentalize what you just said. So uh, let me preference this by saying I'm a huge Dave uh, Chappelle fan. I, I knew him when we did the Nutty Professor. You can check all these things. Before he blew up, uh, they used to call him Pilot Boy because he shot so many pilots and none of them got picked up and he kept pushing forward. Uh, and I think he's a genius. But having said that, there's a certain comfortability that comes with uh, being rich and successful. And, and, and by that, I mean, Dave has made so much money now. So what can they really do today? You know what I mean? He has that freedom because if Dave never tells another joke, if he never work, uh, does stand up again, he's not going to suffer. So that gives you a certain amount of freedom to be able to say the things that you want to say and do what you want to do. For those of us that are on the rise, that are trying to get to that status, uh, and, and, and by that I mean for those of us who have to continue working, who have to, who can't just say, hey, you know what, I had a good run. I'm just going to ride off in the sunset. It's a different ball game. And so uh, I said all that to say, I love what he's doing, but you have to also take in consideration. There's no such thing of uh, right now of him jeopardizing his career. There's no such thing of, uh, of him not being able to work in this town or whatever, because he'll always be able to work. He'll always be able to go, you know, to a comedy club or a venue and people will pay to see him. So uh, I love what he's doing. I think he's immensely talented. He's one of my favorites. But to answer your question and to be very specific, you know, you have to take that element out because he has long passed any type of punishment that would be significant enough to impact his life, especially financially. You know, I, 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 I don't know that I agree with that, Doug. I, I don't. And, and I'm going to tell you why. Tell, tell that to Matt Lauer. You know, Matt Lauer was making $20 million a year. The face of the Today Show for, for 25 years or something like that. He gets caught up in a scandal. You never heard from him again. There's so many people that top of their career, they're, top, they, they, they're the top. 
and they do something that is that goes against the societal i don't even want to call it norms because it's not it's 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 what's you 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 are now um you're just going against society and and what we think and i i can't really put it into words in but I think, that's, I, I think that's a, a poor example that you just gave because, you know, Dave is different. Dave is wow. not, he, he's not trying to do movies. He's not, all he wants to do is his stand up. So if Matt Lauer was a stand up comedian and he did, you think he would stop? You think people wouldn't pay to see him now? Or after that incident happened? You think, in fact, his tick, look at what happened to Chris Rock. Chris Rock is a prime example. Before that slap, that Chris Rock received on the thing. He was selling tickets. He was doing okay. He was out trying to get his new special and he was doing, after that slap, he started, his tickets jumped up to like five or $600. So there's a certain amount of success that comes with controversy. I mean, the greatest of that is Donald Trump. No, but, 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 but I, I'm not arguing or I'm not disagreeing that, that controversy sells. We know that. But I still think that Dave going, I mean, I have watched this woke culture that we live in, this politically correct culture that we live in, destroy careers. But how can Here's they, that, thing, that, that's my question to you. How can they destroy his career? Tell me how could they destroy Dave's career? What can they do to him? You can say that in 2023. But let's go back to when Dave Chappelle left the Chappelle show, left $50 million on the table. He went over to Africa. He stayed there for a few months. People said he's on crack, he's on drugs, he's crazy, he's this, he's that. His career was literally in the tank. The media had created a whole narrative that wasn't true. And when Dave came back, he came back doing small clubs. He stayed on the road. He built himself back up, but he also came back with the mentality of F it. This is what I love to do. And if I can't do it my way, I don't want to do it at all. But I can also to point out to you, and maybe you can see it from, from my vantage point, you 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 said he's rich and, and there's nothing that can be done. I, I come from an industry that, that celebrates excess and celebrates people being uh uh beyond rich and, and, and opulence. You, Kevin Hart is, is at the top of the comedy game. Do you think Kevin Hart would touch on a fragment of the things that Dave Chappelle touches on? He wouldn't even go close to the line that Dave Chappelle not only crossed, but he crossed, jumped over it, and kept blazing new trails. I, I, rich people like to stay rich. People who are working, they like to keep working. And, and I, I just but, but 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 Dave and Kevin are on two different paths. What's important? Kevin, to Kevin wants to stay working. That's the path he's on. But but so does Dave, and he's still working. But where but they he wants to, to he wants to work do he wants to work his way. That's right. That but listen, I'm saying. go ahead. But, but where they want to work is different, and how they want to work is different. Dave Chappelle just wants to do stand up comedy. He wants to be a comedian. He's doing what he wants to do. So they haven't taken anything away from him or stopped him from doing what he wants to do. Now, if he was on that path, he, I mean, you just said it. Hollywood has never really been important to him. He walked away from $50 million. So that wasn't important to him. Them putting the things in and this, they stepped back himself. They didn't stop him. He stepped back and then he started coming back. He had been away. He started doing stand up at clubs and this and that because he was getting his feet wet back into something that he wanted to do. He's really wanted to do what he's doing. So I want you to understand where I'm coming from. I want you to, and I want your audience to understand where I'm coming from. Yeah, they could block Dave from doing movies. They could block Dave from getting a sitcom or being on television, but that's not what he wants to do. He's doing what he wants to do. Do you think with all this controversy, Netflix is not going to stop him from getting, if he wanted to do a Netflix special right now, he could because of the controversy, because people are going to be saying, hey, man, let's see what he's going to talk about now. So I want you to understand what I'm saying. Number one, 
Dave has never been controlled by Hollywood because he has never sought to be like Kevin Hart, which is nothing wrong with that, but that's not Dave's lane. So Matt Lauer, yeah, Matt Lauer wants to be that guy on the Today Show in front of that and then that. So they block that. They block something that was dear to his heart. They haven't been able to do that with Dave. And I don't think they can do that with Dave. So that's what I mean. I just want to make sure that you and I are on the same page with that. No, nah, we're Dave, not going to be on the same page with this, Doug. I, I'm, I'm trying to, I, I understand the point you're making. And where me and you fundamentally disagree is I believe when you, when, because you're saying that, that Hollywood is not important to Dave. Says who? That you just said that he did countless pilots that people called him pilot boy or whatever they was calling him. There he was a time. There was a time when it was important to him. When, we, when don't, met, we don't know. We don't know if if it became not important once he went to Africa and had an, an, an awakening. But the point of the matter is he believed in something greater. And, and we to me, and well, here's, but you and I in the same, you and I in agreement with that. You and yes. I are in complete agreement with that. Well, and I, I need to be refreshed as to where we're disagreeing because uh, go ahead. he hasn't been, he hasn't been canceled. You know, he, they haven't taken, to me, canceling means they take away from you something that you want to do. We just saw that with Kyrie. Kyrie, he went and saw yep. the thing. Yep. They took basketball away from him. He really wanted basketball. So he came forth uh, with an apology. He was contrite. Hey, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cause anything because he wanted to get back something that he really wanted. Give me an example of where that has happened with Dave. Not even with the, the sketch comedy show. They canceled it. That didn't bother him. He never came back and said, hey, guys, I'm sorry. I, I apologize. I just want my sketch comedy show back. He's never done that. With, 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 with Kevin Hart, you know, and I don't know Kevin to that degree, but if they took away his movies, if they took away his ability to do these commercials, and, and he's, he, he's more commercial than Dave, that probably would hurt Kevin Hart. He probably would be contrite at that point and say, hey, look, you know, I'm sorry, or what have you. I don't see that with Dave. So unless you can give me an example where they've done something to Dave that has affected him to, to the point to where there was some remnants of remorse, then I, 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 I don't understand. I don't understand. You have to give me an example of what you're talking about. Okay. And, and, and I've allowed you to talk, and I'm just asking you to give me the same uh, consideration I just gave you. You, where you and I are fundamentally disagreeing, is you're making an assumption that Hollywood, that television, is not, was not important to Dave. That is where we disagree. You, you are now speaking from a, a, a 2023 lens looking backwards and i'm speaking from the day that they canceled this man because he was canceled before cancel was even a thing he was literally canceled thrown under the bus all types of 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 narratives were put out on this man so for you to to say hollywood's not important to him did you sit down and have a conversation with him did did you did you get to the bottom of it and say, Dave, what's it? All you know, and all we all know, is that Dave came back with a mindset that if I can't do it my way, I don't want to do it at all. So, th so that's one point I want to make. But we can go through history. You, you talk about uh, uh, the, 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 the powers that be, taking away things that, that matter most to people. How do you explain Muhammad Ali? You, 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 you can look over my shoulder, my idol, a guy who, who, who I look up to as one of the greatest human beings to ever walk this planet. They took away the thing that he loved the most in the prime of his life, but he believed in something more. He, he, was, he was working for something greater. And because of that, it immortalized him. It made him more than a boxer. It made him more than a, 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 a prize fighter. It, 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 it put him on a plateau of the greatest that he still mentioned in conversation years after his demise. So we don't disagree I, I, on that. We don't disagree on that. 
but but that it, I'm just proving you 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 said name name some where where they take away something that you love. No, no, I said name something in Dave Chappelle, not with those people, with Dave Chappelle. Now, but, 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 it, but it's the same thing. But for him, it wasn't worth doing if it wasn't worth doing from his heart. If y'all are gonna censor me, if you're gonna shackle me, if you're gonna cancel me, I don't want to play by your rules. It's the same. I don't care if you're talking about Donald Trump. I don't care if, and I hate to put Donald. Well, Trump we're in, in agreement with that. We, we're in agree. You and I agree on that point. I, you, I'm in total agreement with you on. So that's why I'm confused. Where are we disagreeing? Because we're agreeing. What, 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 what I'm no. saying, I'm in, I'm in agreement with all of that. But you have to realize, Dave walked away from his show. They didn't take <laughs> that from him. He walked away from his show. He has made decisions himself. Uh, you and I in agreement with what he believes in. He didn't want to, I mean, and, and, and things that I'm telling you, he's on record as saying, you know, he's on record as saying, hey, they wanted me to put on a dress. It wasn't that big. It wasn't, it, it wasn't that big for me. You know, I didn't want to do it. These are things that he has said. I he didn't want to do it if he was going to, if, if he couldn't do it his way. I, I, you can't leave that part out, Doug. I That's agree with that. I agree with that. I, you and I are in agreement with that. Where we seem to be, you know, we've been on this point so long. Where we seem to to disagree is when I said to you that he's at a point now where if they do those things to him, he's not going to suffer financial repercussions. Okay, stop, the stop same there. financial stop, repercussions. Stop there. Stop there. Okay. That's 2023. That is the last five, six years. Right. And he was at that point in 2005 or whenever it was that he left his 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 show that he won awards for. That that's my point. Is is he was he was at a crossroads where he could be uh, he could adapt and do things the way that the establishment wanted him wanted him to, or he could make a decision and say, you know what, if I don't do it the way it's in my heart. The way God had given me this talent, the, the reason why I love comedy in the first place, if I don't do it that way, then I don't want to do it at all. And if I got to go and just do small clubs for the rest of my life, that's what it is. So, so you're talking from today, and I, I don't think it's fair to the conversation to, to position it from 2023. Go back to when when when, when his, his life was on the line, when but nobody was, wanted to hire him. I agree with that. No, 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 no. They would hire him. They wanted him to come back to the show. They didn't cancel him back then. He wasn't canceled. And I want you to understand that, Sean. When he walked away from that show and they put all those narratives out about, people were throwing deals at him, Sean. You know, uh, who did he do that for? Comedy Central? HBO? All of, you think those people were saying, hey, we don't want to deal with Dave Chappelle. He didn't do anything back then to cancel himself. He didn't do anything morally bad. You understand? He didn't attack yes. Jews. He didn't attack gays. He didn't do, he stood on his own merit of his own principles. Everybody has to respect that, right? If, if somebody wants you, if somebody right now came and offered you a part to play a gay guy and you said, hey, I, I don't want to do that. You know what I mean? I don't have anything against gays, but that's not me. I don't want to do that. They're not going to punish you for that. They're not going to punish. What he's receiving now is punishable because now he's talking about the, the trans, the, the trans, uh, 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 the trans community. He's talking about, he did uh, Saturday Night Live. He talked about the Jews. He wasn't doing that back then, Sean. He wasn't doing things that were considered wrong or right, morally unethical to people of society. He was relegated. It's almost like, you know, the old saying when they say, you know, when somebody drinks, they're hurting themselves. A person that drinks in, the, in their house that doesn't go out and cause problems, they just drink in their home. He was drinking in the home. So I want you to understand that. He wasn't canceled back then. He wasn't canceled back then. He made a conscious decision himself. I don't want to be a part of this anymore. So I don't. I, that's where I think that we're, we're, we're coming in. There wasn't a drum beat to cancel him back then. And if there was, please explain to me why there was a drum beat. Because that was his own personal choice. He didn't want to wear a dress. He didn't like the writing that was going on. So he quit. Now, he got a, a lot of flack because he quit uh, $50 million were behind it, was behind it. And people were saying, you know, if anything, hey man, here's a black man that, you know, can't be bought out. That was a little, you know, maybe a little turbulence behind that. 
But what did he do to cause cancellation back then? What he's doing now is considered to be a reason to cancel him. That's my point. Okay. Um, and I'll make this last point and then we can move on because we've been on this for a second. And, uh, and, and, and by the way, make sure you edit this up because uh, we, we still got a lot of good stuff to go through. So maybe yeah, you can I, just, I, edit this no, up. No, no, I got you. Um, with Dave, the reason why you see him doing things that will get him canceled today, in all of our lives, there's a moment. There, 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 is, there, is, there is a, a, a catalyst that can change the course of your life. So you are right. I don't know what he was doing on uh, Comedy Central with, with the Chappelle show and in his standups, if those were cancelable uh, uh, events. But what I do know is when he had a chance to sit on the sidelines and assess his life, and walk away from $50 million. He decided it was the catalyst that changed it all. I won't be controlled. I want to do comedy my way. I want to tell jokes that are raw, that are uncensored, that, that are in, in many ways are taboo. And I am going to go there with it, whether they cancel me or not, I'm going to play by my own rules because if not, it's not worth it for me as a human being, as a comedian, to play the game at all. So I think that that you, to, 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 if, if we're going to agree on something, I'll agree. W was he canceled back then by by, by the networks and in and, and, and by Hollywood? Probably not. I don't know, but there was a narrative put out there on him, and many people probably would not have worked with him right away. Maybe they would have in future, who knows? But that, 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 that small area, that small period in his life that would have broke most people or would have made most people say, you know what? I got to play this game the way that they want me to play it or else I'm not going to be able to feed my family. He interpreted it very different. I'll feed my family if I got to work at a lo local grocery store. But if I'm going to do comedy, I have to do it my way. And I now I'm going all the way out there with it because this is what comedy is supposed to be. So I, I don't know if we're disagreeing or we're agreeing, but I, I just- I agree with you. I, 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 and, and, and we'll button it up with this. Keep in mind, I'm in the comedy world. Mm -hmm. So I just like when you were in the music world, behind mm -hmm. the scenes, what we heard out in public, you heard something different within, that, within, the, within the confines of that. I've lived in this comedy world. So I've heard the chatter or what have you. So we're in total agreement. I respect what he did. Uh, the initial thing that you asked me uh, to sum it up was, is he taking chances? And this is how I interpret it to the point that it could cancel him. And what I was saying to you at this point- oh, No, that wasn't the initial question. Uh, and that wasn't, I, I was just saying is, is he- Right, right. But that was one of the things that came up. Is he up. a hero to, yeah, to definitely. a certain extent, he's which you guys, but he's taking the chances a hero, he's taking. And he's always been respected among his peers for taking the stand that he took with Comedy Central and it was long overdue. So he's a hero in that sense. He's one of my favorites. I just made the point that Dave is at the point at the point now where they can't do anything to him. They can't prevent him from doing what he's doing right now, which is his love of doing stand-up comedy. But you and I are on the same point. He's a hero. I respect what he did. You know, I'm a Malcolmite. You know, I'm, I'm a history buff. There are very few things in Black history that you can talk about that I'm not familiar with. So you know, kudos to those guys. We're on the same page, but it, it made for a great conversation. I love to debate. No, I, so 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 did I. This was different. This was a very very different um conversation I expect to have, and I loved every second of it. Uh, speaking of controversial figures who have taken a stand, 
I like like, like who, who knows where we're about to go with this one. Um, Monique, another fellow comedian of yours, comedian, uh, finally got her Netflix special. Not sure what she got paid for it, but Monique went out there and she 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 asked the world to boycott Netflix. Bold, bold, bold move. She was pissed and insulted and felt disrespected about an offer of $500,000 to do a Netflix special when she had so many accolades and had sold out so many shows in so many arenas and headlined so much stuff on her own. And she's like, look, y'all went and gave Amy Schumer $13 million. You, you, you're giving Chris Rock 20 million. You're giving Dave Chappelle 20 million. And y'all come to me with this nasty offer? What, what is your thoughts? Because again, that's another person who said, yo, I don't care. I, I'm going to put it out there. Is she considered a, 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 a hero in that community? Because that was a very risky move she took. Yeah, you know, another, you know, full disclosure, I know Monique. You know, we started together. So this is a person that I've done hole in the wall comedy clubs with in Atlanta when she was married to her first wife, when her set was uh, mainly about him. Uh, but, uh, you know, that that's the nature of the beast though. You know, it's unfortunate that we live in a society where we're still considered the first at things. You know, the first person to get paid this much for something, the first person to win this award, the first person to coach this team. So, you know, that narrative is, is unfortunate, but that's the society we live in. I think that, um, you know, I do agree that uh, Monique was very courageous to stand up for herself. Hopefully it worked out for her in the end because she ended up working with them anyway. And I think if anything is to be said by that is sometimes you do have to take on the establishment and, uh, and, and if you stay the course and, 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 and stay true to yourself, things will come back and work out because they, for her, they did. They, she came back and she did a Netflix special. Okay, well, just to piggyback off of what we were just talking about, do you think she was canceled? I do think Monique was canceled to a degree. I do think Monique was canceled. I do think that there was a, a, a conscious effort. Uh, how else can you explain it? I mean, you, you're talking about somebody who won an Oscar, man. An right. Oscar, someone who won an Oscar, someone who is uh, in basketball would be considered a triple threat. She's an actor. She's a comedian. You know, uh, uh, she's just she uh, writes. She's a writer. Writer, motivational speaker. Yes. You know, how, how else can you equate her just dropping off the face of the 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 the, 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 the showbiz planet? I mean, yeah, I, I do think she was uh, that that was put out there on her like that. Yeah, but that, that proves my point of what I was just saying is when you stand on your truth, when when, when you are willing to go out there on, on, on a, a, a limb, when nobody else agrees with you and you willing to take that chance. Now, now, here we go. You just said it out your own mouth. She was canceled. And because it was important for her to stand on her truth, whether it was about the type of comedy she was doing, or the compensation for the comedy she was doing based on my credits. Like you said, I, I, I won an Academy Award. I, I've sold out shows all over the world. But, but, I but, 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 the, but the fundamental difference, the Go ahead. fundamental difference between, the fundamental difference between her and Dave Chappelle, Dave made the decision to step back. She wanted to keep working. She put it out there that she was trying to work. You never saw Dave come out and say, hey man, they won't give me a special. They won't give me a TV show. They're not putting me in these movies. They're not, he never did that. So there's a big difference between her and Dave Chappelle. She wanted these things. She uh, led a movement against Netflix because they were being unfair to her. You know, according to her, she felt mistreated. Dave never did that at all. So I hope you can see that difference. There's a big difference in the road Dave travel and the road Monique travel. Okay, so 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 let me give it back to you the way you told me. 
you said Dave is in a position financially to travel the road that he chose to travel because they cannot cancel him. They can't take food off his table at this point. And my point is, I don't know. I don't know how much Mo Monique had in the bank when she decided that she was going to call out Netflix. I don't know if, if she could support her family for the rest of her life based on the earnings prior to her taking that stand. I, but for her, whether she ever ate in that town again, it was important to point out something that she deemed as unfair. It, it, whether it's gender bias, color bias, even if I never eat again, y'all are trying to, 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 I know I'm going to be canceled be, be, be on, uh, for saying Netflix is, is not paying me what they're paying all of the other comedians out there. I know I'm going to be shunned even in the African-American community for talking out about Tyler Perry, talking out, out against Oprah Winfrey, who is beloved, talking out against uh, Lee Daniels. But for her, she was fighting for her truth. So, so, so I'm just going to your original point because you're like, yo, Sean, they couldn't stop Dave Chappelle from eating. They, they, they can't do nothing to him now. And, and I've always looked at it. It wasn't about now. It was about them taking a stand whether they ever made a dime again. It was important to do it their way. So I don't know if she well, had would you, to... well, well, would you say there's a difference? And I'm enjoying this conversation with you. And I hope people, oh, are, getting, I hope people are getting enjoyment out of it because you know, we've had some funny points, we've made some fun, but we're, we're, we're on a topic now that I feel like needs to be discussed. And a lot of times our people in particular tune out when it comes to these type of things or what have you, and they need to pay attention to this. But when you say there's a difference, Sean, if, I, if, if, if there was a party being thrown, big party being thrown, and you wanted to go to that party, you felt like you were entitled to go to that party, and you didn't get invited. And you went out and you said, hey, you got petition. Hey, I don't want nobody to go to this party because they didn't invite me. Out of all the things I've done for this company, they left me off the invitation list. And you went out and you made a big stink about it. And as a result of you making that big stink about it, those people at that party started making calls saying, hey, don't let Sean in this party. Don't let Sean in that party. Don't let Sean in this party. Me, on the other hand, I could care less whether I go to the party or not. In fact, they might have sent me an invitation. I said, I don't want to go to the party. I, I, I just, I don't want to go to the party. But I don't go out and cause a stink. I don't go out and tell people, hey, don't go to that party because I'm not going. I, and I, I, you know, do this, do that, do this, do that, that. I just say, hey, I don't want to go to the party. And then I make my own party. I come back and make a smaller party and I start inviting people. Isn't there a difference? We both didn't go to the party, but it's under different circumstances and there are different repercussions as to us not going to that, to that party. party. You see the you see the line I'm drawing. Yes, you, I, I do. Mean, you, you, see, you, you see where I'm going. You see where oh, I'm going with this. It, it's it, it's an amazing analogy, and I'm glad you thought of it in in real time. I it's, I, I see the difference between the two. You you summed it up perfectly. But that's only one point we were discussing. I think that I was fighting initially, or my, 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 my disagreement was where you started the conversation about Dave and you said, look, they can't do anything to this man because he's paid already. What are they going to do to him? He has the money. He's got the accolades. He's got the fan base. And that but is I want you to, but, but I want you to understand, I don't mean to cut you off, but I want you to understand the context and what, what I was, the, the context, let's, because I said that, but I said that in context. Okay. And I said, and I said that here's the context. I preference that. I, the reason I said that is because I used me and other comedians that are out here trying to get to where he is. Yes. You understand yes. what I'm saying? Yes. So yes. what I'm saying is that, and, and, and I'm being real with you. I'm still out here grinding to take care of my family. You understand what I'm saying? If, if I got a call saying I couldn't work anymore in this town, it would affect me tremendously. It might shape my thoughts. It might cause me 
to take a different course of action. I'm saying Dave Chappelle has reached a point to where he doesn't have to take that into consideration. If they canceled all his gigs, if he couldn't sell any more tickets or whatever, whatever, he'd still be in a different situation than me. So that has to come into effect with your thinking as a human being, whether you're a revolutionary, whether you, you know, you, 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 you're outspoken, when it comes to your, because when the mafia comes at you, you might not care about your life, right? You might say, hey, man, they can kill me. But if you got a wife, you got kids, you got mother, whatever, now you have to take those things into consideration as to how you want to move forward. You understand? Dave doesn't have to take those, those things into consideration. That's the point I was making, is that they can't cancel him to the point to where he has to take those things into consideration. I, do, I, I, I don't believe that. Based on what he said, and based on his actions, I don't believe that. I I, I couldn't agree with you more. I, I think that our only crossroad is, is is that is today. I don't know financially where he was back in. Okay, well, you agree, we're in agreement with that. We're in okay, agreement. Okay, that. that, that's we're that's my that. that's the point I'm just trying to make. When he took that stand, it was bold stand. When Muhammad Ali yeah, said, totally "I refuse to go over and fight uh, and fight the Viet Cong." on top of the world financially i don't know that he was in a position to, to to take that stand but he took it anyway so i you you brought up some great analogies i i, I think that that but I he took that he, but but he took that stance and I, and I want to make this clear to, to 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 your audience he took that stance himself he didn't take that stance to the detriment of anybody else you understand he didn't come out and say and I want you to understand it. Hey, who, who are we talking? Are we talking, I'm Dave talking about Dave Chappelle? I'm talking okay. about Dave Chappelle. He took that stance on himself yes. and it was relegated to himself. There weren't any repercussions where he took the stance saying, and I'm using Kanye as an example. He didn't say, hey man, these Jewish writers are trying to get me to put on dresses and you know, Jewish people or white people ought to be ashamed of themselves. We got to stop this. We got to stand up. That would have yielded a whole different type of repercussions. The stance that he took is that this is what's right for me. And if I can't do it my way, then I won't do it at all. That he didn't draw the irony. Uh, uh, he didn't draw the, the uh, what do you call it when somebody draws something that, uh, uh, the raft. He didn't draw the, the raft of Hollywood on his back. Then what he's doing now, we're talking about transgenders. When he went on uh, 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 Saturday Night Live and the Jews got upset, he's doing those things now. So there are two different type of stances or, 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 or behaviors that he took. The earlier one that you're talking about was relegated to himself. And you can't get mad at a person for their personal choice of what they will and will not do. What he's doing now, because you keep saying now, the 2020, it's a different type of stance that he's taking now. One that could warrant cancellation. In fact, that word is being thrown around with him. So what I was saying to you is what he's doing now that warrants cancellation, in a sense, I'm saying they can't really cancel Dave. That's what I'm saying, if that makes sense. I mean, I, I hope, I, hope I, 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 I cleared that up. It makes perfect sense. And I would agree with you wholeheartedly. Today, no, I don't think they can cancel him. He, he, even, even if... Uh, he never, ever he, he does another movie, does another TV show. People went out to, to, to Ohio during the pandemic to see this man in his backyard. Dave will find a, a, a Dave is just so far out there. He exactly. will find a way to perform for an audience and they will find a way to go see him. So and that's his first love. That's what I'm saying to you. He loves that more than anything else. So that's you and I button it up on the same page. Fair enough. You you brought up Kanye West. Number one, what is your thoughts on Kanye? And I have an interest, and I want to go just a little bit different. I, I see, I see so many people in Hollywood and in entertainment overall. And they, 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 Kanye, you couldn't get him off your newsfeed. 
this this guy dominated the headlines. And now damn near you don't even see this man. It, 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 you 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 hear about him here and there, but the, the, the Kanye news tidal wave is over. Is, is that self-imposed or is it because he's canceled? Ah, boy, you hit, <laughs> <laughs> you hit me with some tough questions, man. I thought I was going to come over here. I guess I'm not Alex Thomas. I guess <laughs> we, strayed, we strayed away from the Alex Thomas path. Uh, I think that, uh, and I gotta be careful what I say, man. I think that that's a, a little bit of both. Uh, I think that's a little bit of both, but you know what Kanye, man, to me, and this is just an, a, per, a personal observation that, that, uh, that I've made of him. And I don't know how far reaching your show is. Cause I, I most certainly don't want a confrontation with Kanye West or anybody at this time. I don't have any security. I ain't even got a gate at my thing. You want to get me, you can come right up through my front door and do something to me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, but I, you know, after the untimely death of his mother, which was a horrible thing in itself, he just doesn't seem like he's been right since then, since his uh, since his mother passed. And who would be? I mean, that was just a horrible way. She went in for, uh, and I'm paraphrasing this, some cosmetic type of surgery, and then and and she died. So he just hasn't been the same, Kanye since that happened. And I, I don't know if we, if any of us are the same, my mother-in-law just passed and my wife just had to deal with that. And, you know, she's, she's different. Uh, so I, what do you think? I mean, cause it seems like after his mother passed, it just, he just doesn't seem like he's been that, that same Kanye that we, we, we came accustomed to knowing. Um, you know, I, I, I believe in speaking truth. Um, I, 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 I was, there when Kanye first started out. Kanye wasn't on uh, the label that I worked for, but he would tell you out of his own mouth, long before he became uh, publicly known and became the superstar he became, I was out there just at, I loved Kanye West, the producer, the, the when he put out his first mixtape, I was running around working his project like he was one of my artists. So I'll start there. But I think that Kanye, like many um, public figures and celebrities, they get addicted. F f fame, the drug fame, it is more addictive than cocaine, meth, PCP, and crack all rolled up into one. And Kanye, became addicted to the headlines. He became addicted to seeing himself dominate every news feed, every news cycle, every hour of the day. And he chose to push boundaries, push boundaries, push boundaries. And I'm not even sure that many of the boundaries that he pushed outside of clothing, and his love for fashion outside of music and his love for the arts. When he stepped into the world of, of politics, I'm, no, I'm not even sure how much he believed in what he was pushing in the narrative he was putting out there, but he knew it was going to get him a headline. He knew it was going to keep him top of mind and so long as it keeps me top of mind, people are going to run and they're going to buy my Yeezys. They're going to listen to my music, all of this. But it's just so interesting that when his money, when his money got messed with, when Adidas dropped him, when all of a sudden you go from being a billionaire, now he's still richer than both of us put together. He's a multimillionaire in the hundreds of millions. People talk about him being crazy. If this man was really crazy, you'd still hear about him. He'd still be in the news saying crazy stuff. But he turned that PR machine off when he started to look at his financial statements and, and his uh, accountants and his handlers and all of the people who are, are, are making money off him said, hold up. 
Like, like, like you just stepped into something and it is going to not only cripple you, but it's going to cripple us and cripple this Kanye empire. And it's so interesting to me how if, 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 if you can't hold your tongue, if you just have to blurt things out, if you are in the news every five minutes, where's it been for the last six months after they mess with your pockets? Where's it at? So it just shows that that this 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 circus out in Hollywood it's contrived. This PR thing, when you see people in the news every five minutes and you just think that it just happens, no, their handlers are telling them he or she is eating at this restaurant. Get the cameras out there. They should be walking out around eleven, and they're going in with Drake. They're going in with this one. They're going in with that one. So Kanye is not as crazy as y'all think. And, Brother, and, and, and you, go ahead. Are, you are very insightful. And see, you knew better than I in that area uh, or what have you. You know, I can't really speak to that intelligent. I'm just, I'm speaking from a fan's point of view. It just seems like after his mother passed, you know, he took on a, 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 a different uh, demeanor. And, but you hit, you hit the nail on the head because you live that world, you know, the behind the scenes. So you, you enlighten me. That, 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 that was some great, uh, enlightenment I, I i really appreciate hearing that this is a very educational show man i mean this is very i i like what you're doing here man you you, you sprinkle it in with comedy but you're really educating people in a lot of ways man in a lot of these areas because i gave the insight from the comedy world and you just gave the insight from the from the music world very 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 insightful oh it, it goes it goes it goes to me i i, I am i am a a, a fan of common sense and, and, and I'm a lover of, of people and our people in particular, um, you know, in, in it just always fascinates me when we see these stars and, and, and you think that, um, you know, they just happen to turn up in the media every five minutes. No, that that's planned. It's plotted. It's contrived. It is. Um, but let's switch subjects. We, 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 we talked about the greats um, in this conversation. I, I, we would be remiss if we didn't mention Mr. Chris Rock. Did, did, did you get the chance to see his comedy special? I did. I enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. You know, full disclosure, I'm another, I'm a big Chris Rock fan. So uh, I think it was part of course. Uh, I, I I really enjoyed it, and I was surprised at the pushback that it it, it received from from all people, from black people, from white people. I, I have to admit, I was a little surprised. Uh, he, he received a lot of pushback, you know. When you say pushback, uh, what do you mean? Be specific. Uh, mixed reviews of people who were offended, people who didn't like it. Uh, you know, when he did bigger and blacker, uh, when he when he, his other comedy specials to me were met with some controversy, but even the controversy they were met with was still positive. You know what I mean? Where people say, oh man, he, he, he you know, he said this, but people liked it. I was just shocked that uh, this one didn't hit as hard as I thought with everybody. That's what I thought. You know, me, me and you, we spoke earlier about woke culture. We spoke earlier about being politically correct. Uh, and we also spoke about comedians specifically um, being shackled, um, not being able to speak truth for fear of being canceled. Um, it, it, before I give my thoughts, I, I, Dave Chappelle is here and Chris Rock is right here. Like, like, it, and it used to be the other way. Chris Rock was my favorite comedian outside of, of back in the days, Eddie Murphy, and especially when it comes to stand-up um, specifically. But with that being said, I, I didn't find this thing as funny um, as a normal Chris Rock special. I thought that Chris Rock, you know, and, and I'll give my thoughts and then I want to ask you a question. I thought Chris Rock didn't go in in certain areas. And it almost felt as though he was thinking, how far can I push this envelope for fear of backlash? Now, that's just what Sean took from it. But it, even a comedian on his level, I felt like 
the timing was off with some of his jokes. I felt like I saw the jokes coming. And I also felt, whereas Chris Rock of old would have went in, this Chris Rock was very conscious of the world that we live in. And because of that, his jokes didn't feel as authentic as they felt in the past. And, 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 that, and for that reason, I didn't think it was as funny as Bigger and Blacker. Um, and I also think, let's just call it what it is. You, 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 when, when, when the legends perform, you go to their shows. I, I, I'm not interested in, in going to a Mary J. Blige concert and Mary giving me new music. I, give me what's the 411. Give, give me them classics that, that, that I know and love you for. People went to that, people tuned in to that special because they wanted to hear his thoughts on Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith. And he gave seven minutes out of an hour and 15 minutes to that topic. And I feel like people felt, come on, man, you know why we are here. We love you as a comedian, but we came for a specific reason. And instead of just giving us our money's worth on why we came in the first place, at the end of the show, you gave us a sprinkle. And I think that was a letdown. And I'm just talking as a fan. Well, a lot to unpack here. First of all, in my opinion, you know, and I, I like using analogies, Chris Rock has a body of work to compare his new work to. And that's always hard. It's always hard to compare a sequel to the original. So he was under that microscope because his body of work and his previous specials have been so good, they're gonna be hard to top. So I didn't go into his this special with that lens of, man, this is what he's done. Let me see what he's coming with. And you know, to that point, it's, it's so, and I don't want to make a sweeping indictment because I don't mm -hmm. want to be accused of that. But I do want to say this. I, I work in front of Black people, Black audience, Black and Latino audience most of the time. And we have a different barometer. We have a different measure of what we like and how we judge. And it's more critical and it's more, you know, and I, I say this on stage, man, Black people, you know, and, and, and when, when I perform a lot of times, they come to the show, they got problems just as worse as yours. So, yo, you better make me laugh. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying I just paid $30 to see you up in there, man. You better give me my thing. And that's the mentality. You like, yo, uh, we, you got slapped. You better give us the goods on. And that's the mentality. Yeah, white people generally come, hey, we just hope it's going to be a great show. You know, but we come with a chip on our shoulder. And I think you have to take in consideration is that Chris Rock had a show that he was doing. Before that slap, he was going to do this special. So he was working on that show. He was in the process of that. And then the slap happened. So, you know, you want to talk about people sticking to their guns and doing what he wasn't going to abandon everything that he had worked months and months and months to achieve just to talk about that slap. And here I want to get a little personal with you. And right. you, know, you and I talked about this beforehand and we said that we weren't going to go, you know, heavy into this because of things that I'm doing uh, with this. But I'm in a similar situation with Chris. I mean, I had that whole Jamie Foxx thing happen, that whole roast thing happen. It happens to you, you know, and, I'm, I'm, and, and, and it's comparable to what happened with Chris Rock. You don't want to take something that happened that in, in, in initially... Because with that thing with me and Jamie, and that's a negative thing in his mind, man. That was something that was, he made good of it. He smiled. He said, oh, man, you know. But you have to realize he was hurt by that, man. He was hurt the same way I was hurt. He was hurt by that. So you're not going to make your whole special. And this, is, and, and this is what I try to tell Black people and Brown people in particular when you come see a comedian, when you, when you watch us perform. Stop coming to see us with all of those uh, pre-notions before the show. Come and enjoy what you see. 
Because when you have a preconceived notion of what you want from a person, be it if you go out on a date with a girl, and in your mind, you're like, man, I'm going to hit this ass. You know, we're going to this restaurant, we're doing this, I better hit this ass. That automatically keeps you from having the, the best time that you can have. Because if it doesn't end with that, you're disappointed. So I use that to say, when you, I, I didn't go into his special saying, man, all right, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, talk about this, Jamie. I mean, um, come on, talk about this, this Will Smith thing. So I think that he was handicapped to a degree by that. But I, I would just caution everybody, as comedians, most of our comedy comes from pain. You know, things that bother us, isn't it? It's not until we're able to laugh at those things that we can turn it into a diamond. You understand? Recently, with the whole Jamie Foxx thing, man, I kept that under the wraps for so long, man, it bothered me. But my wife and my kids, they saw it. And they started to make fun of it. My kids went and told their friends. They watched it. And my wife sat me down and said, hey, you got to get past that, man. It happened. It's over. You got to see the humor in it. And I just recently, within the last three or four years, got to the point where I could watch that, you know, that I can talk about it. It's funny. I'm doing a documentary on it now. You understand? But I could have never done that until I got past it. So we don't know, like you said, with, with, uh, with uh, Dave Chappelle. We don't know where he is with that within himself. You understand what I'm saying? Who are we talking? Chris Rock. Chris Rock. Chris Rock. Okay. We don't know where he is with that. We do know. I know he said to himself, hey, I got to address this because it's the elephant in the room. But to go into grave detail and to give more, we don't know if, if, if in his heart that's where he really is. And in order, I know this, and I'll, I'll end it with this, as a comedian, in order to fully extrapolate everything from something to make it completely hysterical you have to feel that way yourself so mm -hmm. you know I, I i'll say that on chris on chris rock's behalf okay so i gotta ask you 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 speak obviously you speak from a standpoint of a comedian um i i, I gave my insight and my feedback on the chris rock special um in 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 the majority of what i talked about was the, the quality of his jokes. Um, I felt like like the timing was off in many of them. I felt like you saw the jokes coming. So I just got to ask as a comedian, it's one thing um, if you're an athlete, you know, you've been running on them same legs for years and years and years. Your knees hurt, you can't move as fast, you can't jump as high. You can't do the things that you once did. Is it the same as a comedian? Because you would think as long as you can talk and as long as you got a sense of humor, you should be as funny as you was 20 years ago or you damn near should be funnier because you got more content, you got more experience, you got more things that you've gone through and, and, and now you can take all of these experiences and do what you do naturally. And it just felt like as a comedian, maybe maybe it's age, maybe it was awareness of the, the, the culture we're living in, but it just didn't feel like even the jokes that, that he worked um, to your point for the last year preparing, those jokes didn't hit as hard. Well, I'm gonna give you a classic story, brother. You give it, you, you, you're getting some great, great, great uh, behind the scenes content from me from the great Eddie Murphy. I did, uh, I'm gonna try to make this story as fast as I can, but I, I was on that the, the movie, The Nutty Professor. And I had an opportunity to sit down with Eddie Murphy and I asked him, I said, Eddie, why aren't you doing stand-up anymore? And he said to me something that I didn't understand then, but I fully understand it now and it, and it will relate to what you just said. He said, you know, man, when I first started doing stand-up, and, and, and let me preference this by saying this, what makes a great stand-up comedian, what makes you love a comedian is the, their ability to relate to you, for you to look inside their stories and see stories of your own. They might not be the exact same stories, but you see similarities in your life. That's what makes you love those comedians. Well, Eddie Murphy said to that point, he said, you know, I've been rich so long now, man. He said, I wanna do stand-up, but what am I gonna talk about that people can relate to? When I was broken, he said I was doing the shit. I was talking about shitting and your aunt falling down the stairs. Blah, 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 blah. Oh my God, Lord, 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 help me. I was able to talk about things that people out there could relate to their aunt, 
taking a shit, whatever it was. But he said, what am I gonna talk about now? I'm at a, me at, 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 a, at a meeting with these guys and they're talking about paying me $10 million and I'm gonna talk about that experience. I'm gonna talk about using a bidet. You know, I'm gonna talk about, you know, having a private chef. He said, I've lived, and I'm, su I'm, sum I'm summarizing what he said, what he said. I've outlived now because of my success, I live in a different world than the people that I'm trying to touch live in. And that makes it harder for me to connect with them. So Chris Rock has done the same thing. You know, when he, when he came out with the, you know, if you look at Chris, Rock, Chris Rock's story, and I don't know if a lot of people know this, but Chris was more of a mainstream comedian. Before he did the stuff that you like or whatever, he was more known with white people. He went on tour with Martin Lawrence and he said, and I'm telling you what he said. I've read this and I've heard him say it. He said that Martin was going out in front of those people, killing it, you know? And he said he found himself watching the show, for being such a fan of Martin, forgetting that he had to go on after him. And he said he struggled behind those shows. So that's why he had all of a sudden, he had this newfound thing, man, I got to connect with black people. I got, and so he made it his mission to connect with black audiences and he became that. But you have to realize, He's lived now, man. These people, and you know this, they don't live the life that we do. Chris doesn't have the same obstacles. He doesn't wake up with the same challenges that you wake up with. But the people that are coming to see him, those are the people that live those challenges. So although, like you said, you don't get older, you know, your, your knees don't hurt, but your experience, your ability to relate to the common person becomes harder and harder the more money, the more sheltered life, the more bubble life you live. So we got to give him that. He's not the same person that he was on those specials that you saw financially. Uh, uh, he's not married now. So I'm not trying to make excuses for him. I thought it was a brilliant special, but I am trying to relate to what you said as to how athletes get older, they get a step behind. Well, in life, we live different. And that causes that step behind or those things that you... Uh, related to, to sports. And, and, and they're synonymous in, in that sense, if, if I was able to articulate it no, uh, you, enough you, for you, you to did, understand. You did an excellent job. You did an excellent job. Here, here, here's, you know, just, the, and this, you, you're speaking from the standpoint of a comedian, which is, which is great. Um, but, but taking into consideration what you said about Eddie Murphy, right? Eddie Murphy, there's a self-awareness there. He, he himself uh, understood, I am not one of the people that I am, that I used to do my stand-ups in service. I'm no longer one of them. And I don't know if I can reach them in an authentic way anymore because they're coming looking for delirious. They're coming looking for raw. So his sense of awareness, I'll give it to him. If that's what kept him off the stage, so be it. Even if he loves comedy and he feels like the thing I love most, I just can't do because I can't relate to the people or they can't relate to me anymore. Now I'm just talking as a fan. Unfortunate for people who have high level success, especially in the public eye, whether, whether you are Mike Tyson, uh, whether, whether you are Eddie Murphy or Michael Jordan, when we pay our money to see you, unfortunate for you, we're coming to see the greatness that you once gave to the world. Jordan had six rings, but it was a big difference when he went to Washington, put on the number 45, ran up and down the court and couldn't dunk anymore. And people were so used to seeing your name. Your nickname is air. That's we came to see the guy who was high flying, the guy who could take over a game by himself. And I understand all of the challenges that you just spoke of. But maybe there's a sense of awareness 
that Chris needs to 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 from from a, from a fan standpoint. Unfortunate for him, you reached the pinnacle. You 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 top of the charts. You are people's favorite comedian, and when they come to see you, they're coming to see bigger and blacker. They're coming to see that person that we know and love. And when they feel like you're not operating at that level anymore, it is a letdown because they have nothing else to compare it to but you. You know, this is a uh, this is a deep show, man. This is a really, really, really deep show. Your insight, the topics that you come. You know, you told me that we did a, a, a pre- uh, uh, and people, you know, that people don't know this, you always do a pre-interview before you talk. Say, hey, this is what we're kind of going to be, you don't know exactly what we're going to be talking about. But you just said, hey, man, this is, you know, I'm going to be talking about some different things. I want to get your insight on things. I had no idea that it was going to go this deep, man, because I, I haven't been challenged like this in an interview, man, in a long time. Uh, uh, but you make, you, you, you make some interesting points and you and I stand on different, because it's interesting for me to talk to you because you come from the standpoint of a paying customer. I Correct. come from the standpoint, and I, I mentioned earlier, when we come and we perform in front of a certain audience, and I don't want to make a sweeping indictment about black people because I love my people, I love brown people, but you know, I perform mostly when I'm in comedy club before my people. And I think we have to, I understand that, 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 that we're paying to see uh, bigger and blacker, but we we also have to go into it with a mindset, you know, for example, Jordan, you use that, uh, people had to go into that realizing that he was older, that he wasn't the same Michael Jordan, that he wasn't Air Jordan, that he was playing for a different team. He didn't have Scotty Pittman. So I think you have to be realistic about your, your uh, expectations or you'll be let down. I use the analogy about the girl. If you think you're going to sleep with her and you don't sleep with her, uh, it, it, it wasn't bigger and blacker. It wasn't those things, but I just liked it for where he, where he is now. And it's so hard. It's so hard in life period to duplicate yourself, to top yourself, especially like you said, when you're at the apex, when you reach the apex of, of, of a career and, 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 and I would caution all of your viewers that when you go see a comedian, when you go see an artist, when you go see Mary J. Blige, you have to give that artist an opportunity to swing from where they are in life now. And you can't hold them prisoner to the greatness that they have shown over a certain amount of years. You do them a disservice and you do yourself a disservice. And that's, you know, that's how I feel. Having said that, I thought it was great. I thought it was, you know, you and I saw it from two different lenses, but I, I, I thought it was great. And I think we can't hold people prisoner to their past work. And we have to go into, and this is the last thing I'm gonna say, and this is the point that I wanted to accentuate. We have to go into buying those tickets. We have to go into paying for that uh, uh, subscription with that mindset. And if we do that, we can free ourselves. But if we don't, we're gonna always walk away with some type of disappointment. You know, again, you speak very much. Uh, you're making valid points. They're great points. Um, but but you're speaking from the other side. Um, again, I I, I worked uh, with some of the biggest artists on planet Earth over the course of my career. Um, you know, I have watched people put out records, and and they sold tens of millions of copies of these records. It's, is, it, is, it, is it their fault that they can't achieve that? I mean, Michael Jackson, for God's sakes, has the biggest album of all time in Thriller. He, he goes to put out bad um, and, and albums out there that were great albums, but he was always measured to Thriller. It, it just, it's just unfortunate when you're an artist and you reach the top of the charts, that is just what it is is and you know people can give you a pass or they you know, or they can take away you know what i'm gonna go into this with an open mind and i, I want to see the old material and i'm not going to compare he or she to to their past works but truth of the matter is 
you know, subconsciously, there was a bar that was set. Yeah, man, you like you just like the typical, you know, man. Screw all that. Come with it. Yeah, I paid this money, and you better make me laugh. And I want to see whoa, whoa, some whoa. of that shit you did in black, bigger and black and deaf for the shit that I told my cousin them about. You better do that shit. Nah, I mean, you know, I spoke about Mary J. Blige earlier. Like, like but it's different. It's different for comedians though, because see, Mary J. Blige can go back and do her old songs. She can go back and do the four one. Comedian can't go, hey, you know what? Man, shit, I'm struggling with this new shit. Uh, so I'm gonna go back and do what I did on Black, Bigger, Black, and Devil. I ain't saying he's gonna kill them, but I understand. You're right, you're right. Cause I paid money to see Mary do my life. I paid money to see Jay-Z do in my lifetime all three volumes. I, I like like it, you you're right. I, I I didn't even take it. Y'all always gotta have fresh material. Oh, uh, <laughs> You know something? We we brought up Michael Jordan earlier. Let's 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 go on a lighter note. But who knows? With us two, this could turn into <laughs> something deep. Who knows? Um, we brought up Michael Jordan earlier. What what is your thoughts on Scottie Pippen's ex wife dating Jordan's son Marcus? Damn man, I've been really out of touch. You mean to tell me? Come on, yo, get get out of here, man. Just say I don't want to answer this. There ain't no, no way. No, man, I'm gonna answer it. I'm gonna answer it because it's it, just the absurdity of it. But you mean to tell me that Scotty Pittman's wait a minute, Scotty Pittman's son? No, Scotty Pittman's ex-wife, Larsa Pippen. Okay, he shares. He was married for something like. 20 I know. Years. As I read his book, I read his book. He he, he shares four children with this woman. Right. Woman. She is, I believe, 48 years old, and she is dating Michael Jordan's oldest son, Marcus Jordan, who is 36 years old. They no, are an item. Man, you ain't got to say no more. You know what they say, and I'm going to bring it to you real. There's nothing like a woman scorn. So that means that this is vengeance on the highest level. This is some serious get back. You ain't, you ain't gotta tell me the backstory. You ain't gotta tell, all you gotta do is tell me who she is and who he is, and I'll put it together. That's what that is, man. That's some get back. That's what that is. Yo, I, I'm gonna tell you, I, I, I've talked about this subject um, in the past. And, and, and I mean, she was with Scotty when he was playing with Jordan in the mid nineties, she was right there when he won some of them championships with Jordans. I believe she got with Scotty when she was 21 years old, 2021. How do you date this man's son who you, 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 you could say, I didn't know him. I just met him. That's some BS. That's a woman scorn, man. That's a woman scorn. We all know deep down, like you said, you know, you talk about the what we think. We all know that's a woman scorn, man. That's a, that's a woman scorn because just out of principle, you don't do that. There's certain things you don't do out of principle. You understand what I'm saying? So for her to do that, she has broken that code, that principle. So that's a woman scorn. That's what that is. Yeah, I mean, um, I I would love, you know, it's everybody always talk about um, Scotty. They talk about Michael Jordan and their thoughts. You know, I would really love to talk to 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 market to um, Jordan's ex wife, um, because that's her baby boy, and he's de dealing with this cougar. I would, who who I'm sure, and I think Juanita is her name, Juanita Jordan. I'm sure Juanita was there when Marcus Jordan was a little boy hanging around this grown woman when she was then married to, to, to Pippin. But see, that's- I that's, would that, love that's to hear her power, thoughts on it. That's the power of Coochie, because you know he probably say, mama, you ain't got nothing to do with this. Stay out of this, mama. Mama, stay out of this. I got that, mama, stay out of this. So, you know, Coochie transcends all that, man. Coochie transcends the, the, the normal thinking, regular thinking or whatever, whatever. He probably enjoyed that coochie. He's like, hey, I don't care what they say. It's you and me, baby. So that's that's what that is. No, she is putting something. I mean, let's just keep it 100. That man's last name is Jordan. Like, 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 
it, it don't take too much digging, too much research, too much investigating for somebody to realize, yo, that's Michael Jordan's son. I bet Michael you Jordan has a different opinion. I bet Michael Jordan said, hey, now write a book on that. Write another book. Write a book on that. I bet you he, you know, I do this, uh, I do this bit in my in my comedy, man, where I see you, because I have all sons. I got nothing but sons. And I was like, man, thank God I got sons. I feel, you know, for all of y'all out there with daughters, God bless you or whatever. You know, the, and, and all the men with daughters kind of go, ooh. And I say, well, you can do that, but let's keep it real. You know, two parents get called about their kids at school. One gave the other one a blowjob. Which parent would you want to be? You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> if you the father, you're like, hey, my boy's coming, especially out here in Hollywood. If you the dad, you're like, oh, no, not that. So Michael <laughs> Jordan is that parent that got the call and said, hey, your son. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm sure he is. I'm sure he is, man. I'm sure he is. Um, and, and I'm going to tell you, I'm, and I'll leave it here. To your point earlier, the power of the coochie, man, th that boy can have any any woman he want. Um, she must have put something on him for him to choose out of all of these women that are his age, out of all of these women walking around that want to uh, get with him for no other reason than I know I get with you. I, 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 you know, hey, it's like having... Happened. It's the Adam and Eve effect, brother. That must have been some good coochie in the garden to eat to get him to eat that fruit that God told him. God told him, <laughs> don't eat this. You so. absolutely right. You as okay. So before I let you up out of here, man, I'm enjoying this conversation. I want to be mindful of your time. Before I let you up out of here, I gotta ask you. We we talked about uh your relationship. We we, you know, we, actually, we brought up Martin Lawrence. Um, but I know you have a very close relationship with him. You hosted the, the, the First Amendment comedy special that, that he had. You did it, I, I think, for something like four straight years. So you got a personal relationship with this man. Um, I, I just want, what is it about Hollywood? Like, what is it about, in, in, you, you said something interesting. You, at the beginning of our conversation, you were like, comedians are some of the most depressed, hurt people out there. But Pat Williams, um, Martin Lawrence, um, Kevin Hart to an extent, so many, what is it about Hollywood that, that breaks these uber successful men down? Like, like they, they just can't, I mean, we spoke about Dave Chappelle leaving and going to Africa. Is, is this something in the water? Is it the pressure? Like what, what is it about that place? You know, I was told this when I first got here to Hollywood and I've lived by the grace of God to see it unfold, it, that this town is truly Sodom and Gomorrah. And whatever deficient, uh, let me try to see if I can use it. Whatever uh, uh, deficiencies you have, whatever negative uh, behavior you possess, this town, magnifies it. And let me explain that. In other words, if you drink a little bit, when you come out here, you'll end up drinking a lot. If you used to just dabble in drugs, it accentuates or multiplies whatever your character flaws are because you're around it, you're around temptation. And a lot of these comics, uh, and I'm not talking about the ones that you, know, you just named in particular, but a lot of people come out here and they end up selling pieces of their soul to get where they want to get. And then when they get there, they look back and then it's hard to look in the mirror. Mm -hmm. You understand? Hey, you know, and I'm just using this as an example, you know, where a, a man could be straight all his life, never had any intentions of, 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 of being gay. And, and I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with gay, but let's say he compromised that in some form or fashion. And then you make it to the top and you have to look back on that. And in your heart, you know, that's not me, why did I do that? And those type of things, I just use that as an example, but drugs or, or, or with women, they weigh on a person's soul. And so they unravel because they spend all that time trying to get to the top of the mountain. And when you get to the top of the mountain, 
you have to ask yourself, man, was it worth all of that to get here? Realistically, I could have done without being at the top of this mountain. You know, there's an old saying that say, when you look up at the sky, it's blue. But we actually know when you get there, it's not blue. It's black when you get there. And I think that's, the, that, that's the, the, the Hollywood illusion. We look up and we see a blue sky. And then when we get there, we realize it's not everything that it's cracked up to be. Because I have met and worked with so many people in this town, man, that have everything and they're miserable. They're unhappy. They're irritable. They, and, 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 and if you would have told them this on their journey, hey, man, you're going to make it one day. And you're going to have everything in life and you're not going to be happy. They would have looked at you, man, are you crazy? But it happens. So this town collects your soul. And I always say- That's powerful. Oh, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. Say, say, say that again. Wow, that's powerful. This town collects, or, or, or I said this town collects your soul, but there's a payment. You have to make payments of your soul to advance in this town especially rapidly, like some of the entertainers do. And I'm gonna put this on a t-shirt, man. I always say this, sell your talent, not your soul. And so many people have sold their soul to get where they are. And now they're unhappy, man. And so I don't have much, you know, uh, Sean, but I'm, I sleep good at night, man. I'm, I'm, I'm truly happy within myself, man. And I have never compromised myself to this town in any shape, form or fashion. And that includes being in a camp, carrying somebody's bags, or being a butler at a party for somebody, or serving drinks for them, or bringing them drinks. I've never compromised my manhood. And you want to go back to talking about Dave Chappelle, and that's what I respect about Dave Chappelle. And everything that I was saying about Dave Chappelle was in compliment to him, because he has gotten to where he has gotten his way, as you say. So he doesn't have to compromise. And if, and and. And that's the most the most powerful thing that you can be as a man in this on this earth is to make your decisions and not worry or fear that somebody's going to take something from you that will cause you to be miserable. And, and, and that's what I meant. I don't think Dave Chappelle is there. I don't think you can take anything from him at this point that'll call because he's doing what he's love what he loves. And I don't think that can ever be taken from him. So I went a long way to answer your question. But that's what I think it is, man. I think most of these people, and when you look at people who have snapped or who've had problems, look at their past and look at what the things that they're done, they've done. And it will show you that they've been unhappy, that there's an unhappiness about them. A lot of these guys are on depressants. They take medication. They do all of these things, man. And it's, it's sad. It's really sad. Yeah, it really is. Um, you know, you, you think of comedians and you guys bring so much joy to the world, so much laughter, so many great memories. Uh, but there's a dark side to comedy, man. And you, you, you can look at the Jim Belushi's or the John Belushi's rather, uh, the Chris Farley's, uh, the Robin Williams. It, it, you, the list goes on and on and on. Uh, but I love that quote, sell your talent, not your soul. Um, I, we could end it right there, bro. I, I, I've had a, a, a really, really good time conversating with you. That, like, it, it, this is not what I expected. It, it, it's more than what I expected. I, I, I really do enjoy these types of conversations. Uh, we got to do this again, Sean. Man, we got. I mean, this this has been revolutionary for me, man. It'd be interesting to come on here. You know, when something when there's a hot button issue, you know, and then we don't have to go as long just to, 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 because what I liked, this was almost like Martin and Malcolm and not from the sense that you're Martin or you're taking Martin Stan, I'm taking Malcolm Stan, but they, they, they had two opposing views that contributed to a common cause that was positive. Correct. That they had to, you know, like Malcolm said, you know, they took two different cars but they were headed towards, the, you know, they were trying to get to the same destination. And I feel like that's what you and I have been able to do. We've just been in, you know, because most of the time when you come on these shows, man, rarely have I had somebody disagree or say, hey, man, I, I don't agree with you. That It's always been, yeah, yeah, I see your point. And they keep, whether they agree with me or not, they go like, yeah, I can see that point and they keep moving. But man, you have been 
you know, I respect the, the, the angles that you have come from. You've challenged my thinking. You know, you've shown me a different side of things to take in consideration. And I feel like that's what should come out of these discussions, man, is that you have two, two, especially two black men, man. It's hard to get two black men to, to agree, to disagree on anything. But the fact that we could come here and, and you, you were steadfast in your belief, I was steadfast in mine, but we reached a point where we acknowledge the other person's side of uh, the other person's view. And that, that's to me, that's power. That is and I wanted to be, and I came on here to be funny, man, especially when you said Alex, <laughs> you know, that, hey, comedians look at things like, you know, you got to follow that guy. Right, Alex has been on here. Let me get on here and light this thing up. And here I'm going like, no, nah, man, I just, no, nah, you're missing my point. You're like, hey, man, let me finish now. I want to finish my point. I'm like, who knew that we were going to go like that on here? No, but that that that's 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 where that's where the best, you know, it, because again, I believe in in authenticity, and and this was a very authentic conversation. It was it was our truth in this moment, and I'm definitely gonna have you back. There, there ain't no doubt about that. And 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 maybe the next time or the next few times you're back on. It's going to be nothing but laughter, jokes, and, and, and it's going to be the other side of, of Doug Williams. But but God knows I enjoyed this side. Man, it was great, Sean. It was great meeting you, man. Uh, I've heard, I, I feel like I've known you because, you know, my brother-in-law has always spoke about you when you were back in the music industry. He would always say, man, I got this friend, Sean, that's, you know, I, I don't know if you want me to divulge who you were working with, but, you know, some very prominent people in the music industry. And he was telling me that you were behind the scenes and, and, and he would always have a story to tell. And my wife, so when my wife called me and she was telling me and I said, wait a minute, is that the guy that used to work for? Say, yeah, I said, yeah, yeah, I know exactly who you're talking about. Yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do. You know, I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 you know, I don't, I, 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 let's put it together. So I'm so glad I did it, man. You have made my day with this interview wait till i tell my wife the things that we talked about uh it's been great man and 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 forgive me if i've you know talked because I, I was and i always pride myself as a comedian not to be long-winded on answers but you the things you put out there i couldn't answer short i got like wait a minute hold up let me get my thoughts together i gotta answer brother i gotta answer you so well, I enjoyed you, Doug. I did, I did, I did. And you and you will definitely be back. So long as you're willing to come back, I, I would love to have you back because there's so many hot button topics and I'd love to get your perspective. Hey, man, let's do it again. You let me know when. Uh, I got to talk to you anyway, man, because you, you got some great insight on how to make these type of things work. And, you know, you've been telling me I need to get my YouTube presence up and stuff like that. So this has been all around great for me you know on camera off camera and i'm just I'm, I'm elated i'm glad that we met man and we're gonna keep in contact and uh i'm doing what are you are you in new york yes so you're gonna get tickets i'm in new york i'm doing a a, a teaching tour i'll be in new york uh on i think july 15th you got tickets when i come i think we'll be at the beacon theater and i think i'll be at the uh i think we're coming to the apollo speaking, hey, of, hey, which, speaking of that speaking of that why don't you go ahead and plug where people can find you and, 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 and some upcoming dates you got? Yeah, so go to my website, dougwilliams.net, dougwilliams.net, not dot, I always say not dot com, dot net. So dougwilliams.net, uh, we're about to post a tour. I'm doing a, a teacher misery tour uh, this summer. Uh, it shows you I'm on cruise ships. I mean, I'm, I'm doing everything. My wife and I have a production company. We're going to be uh, posting uh, different things that we're doing. Also, man, speaking of which, uh, we're doing a reboot to the First Amendment. To, to, uh, be, to Back to your point about the freedom of speech, there's been so much controversy surrounding comedians and our ability to have freedom of speech that I, you know, you, you, you mentioned the show that I, by the way, I created that show. I brought Martin on board. Uh, oh, I created, I congratulations. I didn't know that. Yeah, Martin, I, I went out and I, I got Martin to come on board. Uh, but it's called the First Amendment Stand Up. So we're doing a reboot to that show because of these things that you're talking about, this cancel culture and comedians feeling like a joke, one joke could cancel their whole career. I, I don't know why I didn't bring this up when you brought it up. I was so <laughs> embedded in trying to you know, articulate what I wanted to articulate to my point to you. Uh, but we're bringing that back, uh, First Amendment. So DougWilliams.net, that'll link you to all of my social media pages and everything. And that's what we're doing, Sean. And please, I'm going to hold you to it, man. I got your number now. I'm going to come back, especially when something big jumps off 
or, or something in the world of comedy or something, I feel like, yeah, this would be a good debate with Sean. I'm going to call you and say, hey, man, let's talk about that. Even if we just do a small segment of just talking about that. Absolutely. With that, we're right. Appreciate you, dog. ASU, baby. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.